The city of Coronado, California sits on a peninsula just over an iconic blue bridge from downtown San Diego. Coronado's identity has been shaped by the presence of the military, which transformed the peninsula into what it is today, part naval base, part quiet town. The city's homes range from beachy cottages to stately mansions, and the median home price is $1.9 million. One of the more expensive homes is known today as the Spreckles Mansion. Once owned by San Diego's wealthiest man, the 27-room home sits at 1043 Ocean Avenue, just across the road from the world-famous Hotel Del Coronado and one of America's highest-rated beaches. In 2011, the mansion was owned by Jonah Shacknai, a millionaire pharmaceutical mogul whose young son and girlfriend died there within days of each other. The girlfriend, Rebecca Zahau, was found hanging from a balcony at the mansion. Her death continues to raise questions nearly seven years after the case was closed. Was it suicide? Or was it something else? You know, we may never know exactly what happened, the, the exact se sequence of details about what happened to Rebecca. The Sheriff's Department ruled that Zahau's death was a suicide. It came just two days after Shaq Nye's son, Max, took a fall from a, balcony, from a second story landing in the home, and he died a couple days later. Zahau was the only adult home at the time. This led to more questions. Could she have felt so guilty about the boy's death to go as far as suicide? Did a family member exact revenge? Or was her death connected to a relationship with her boyfriend's brother? The Sheriff's Department believed that Zahau was distraught after the death of Max and that she committed suicide on her own. But her family remains unsatisfied with the result of the investigation and believes it was handled clumsily. That she wouldn't have killed herself, that would go against her Christian faith. So someone else must have done it. The suicide is an explanation that bears no um, roots in fact. And so we don't think this was a homicide masquerading as a suicide so much as just a homicide. Now, a $10 million wrongful death lawsuit is underway and we are following the case. For the San Diego Union Tribune, I'm Lauren Flynn. This is Under the Gavel. Officially, Rebecca Zahau died at her own hand. When investigators first looked around the mansion where she was found, hanging, naked, gagged, and bound hand and foot, they suspected they had a homicide on their hands. But after a seven-week investigation, Sheriff Bill Gore held a news conference to announce that evidence and autopsy results led to the conclusion that Zahau had taken her own life on July 13, 2011. Zahau's mother and sister have refused to believe that the 32-year-old surgical technician killed herself. Their suspicions have fallen on the only other person known to have been at the home at the time, Adam Shacknai, brother of Zahau's boyfriend, Jonah Shacknai. Adam called 911 to report having found Zahau's body hanging from the balcony. He said he cut the rope to lay her on the ground, and then Coronado police and medics arrived. No criminal charges were ever filed in the case. Two years after Rebecca's death, her family filed a wrongful death lawsuit against Adam, Jonah's ex-wife, Dina, and her sister, Nina Romero. It was alleged that the three had attacked, strangled, and hanged Rebecca. The sisters were dropped from the suit when clear evidence revealed they were not present at times crucial to the case. The suggested motive for the alleged assault was that Zahau was the adult in charge at the mansion when Max fell. His death was ruled an accident. That same reasoning has been used to try to explain why she would kill herself, that she was overcome with guilt. Almost immediately after her body was found, Zahau's controversial death caught the eye of national media. Commentators, true crime writers, forensic experts, and conspiracy theorists are sharply divided over whether San Diego County authorities got it right. Some thought the Shacknai fortune bought off investigators. Jonah Shacknai is the CEO and founder of the Scottsdale-based Medicis Pharmaceutical Corporation. In 2010, his company netted $700 million selling anti-aging drugs and other cosmetic products, including Restylane and Dysport. Why do you suppose that the father of the child, the boyfriend of the woman who hangs herself at his home, 
Why do you think that he has just kept himself completely out of all of this? I don't know. I don't know. And if Max were here, I wouldn't know how to explain it to him. Others thought the situation was too complicated to be a suicide. You have to come up with sort of plausible scenarios. And as you go through the evidence, the least plausible scenario is that Rebecca was up there in, in that room and went over that balcony. They question whether Zahao could have tied her own hands and feet in such intricate rope knots. They didn't think she would strip herself bare, tie one end of a rope to the feet of a bed, make a noose at the other end and slip it around her neck, stuff a t-shirt into her mouth, and then launch herself over a second floor bedroom balcony. One of the most inexplicable features in the evidence was a phrase scrawled on a bedroom door in black paint. She saved him. Can he save her? At Sheriff Gore's news conference, reporters were told that DNA on the ropes, blood, fingerprints, and bare footprints on the dirty balcony all belonged to Zahao. He said no other questionable DNA was found at the scene. San Diego attorney C. Keith Greer drafted the lawsuit against Adam Shacknai and has said in interviews that Zahao was killed because of something, quote, sexual in nature. Zahao's mother, sister, and deceased father are plaintiffs in the case. They allege that Shacknai wrote the cryptic message on the bedroom door. Sheriff's investigators did not solicit a handwriting expert's opinion. Shacknai has hired high-power Chicago attorney Daniel Webb and New York lawyer David Ellsberg. On February 23rd, Webb told the Union Tribune that the lawsuit was shameful. He said there is no credible evidence that Adam Shacknai played any role in Zahao's death apart from finding her. He said, quote, We are confident that the trial in this case will conclusively vindicate Adam and finally bring closure to these outrageous allegations. The trial is expected to last a month. The Union Tribune's court reporter Pauline Rappard will be in the courtroom throughout the trial and will have a story summing up the outcomes. Look for updates on our website, SanDiegoUnionTribune.com. Each week, Under the Gavel will dive into the details of the trial. Be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to stay up to date. The Under the Gavel team includes executive producer Daniel Wheaton. Our editing team includes Lara Hockley and myself. Researching and reporting help from Pauline Rappard, Dana Littlefield, and Mary Montagudo. Our artwork is by Gloria Orbegozo and Christina Bivik. And our editorial director is John McCutcheon. For the San Diego Union Tribune, I'm Lauren Flynn. Thank you for listening. <laughs>